Uh, in chapter two, uh, we will zoom in a little bit more on specific challenges related to location interoperability. Um, and if we speak about location interoperability, we also think about the fact that uh, solutions and uh, location data and technologies should work cross-border and also cross-sector. So we have seen in module two that location data and technologies uh, are used in many sectors um, and of course European wide uh, at subnational level, local level, at, et cetera. So it should work in any context, in any settings. Um, in uh, module one, you have already seen this uh, interesting example on uh, a citizen, a person that wants to move from one country to the other, where maybe in the past, uh, uh, this person had to connect to public authorities in the origin country, in the own country, for example, Germany, moving to France required them to contact service, public services and administrations in France. You might need to contact private uh, sector bodies like your insurance company, et cetera, et cetera. So it was kind of complex setting to even do something very simple as moving from one country to the other. And in that perspective, or from that perspective, location interoperability comes into sight because uh, in general interoperability we've seen in chapter one is the ability of organization and systems device to use and exchange data amongst these others. So to exchange the data, but in the context of location data, it's the use and exchange of location data, of course, in a coherent and consistent way. This definition is coming from the European Union location framework, which we will see shortly also uh, in this chapter. Uh, one particular uh, solution that is similar to the NIFO, so that is the National Interoperability uh, Framework Observ Observatory, is the Location Interoperability Framework Observatory, or the LIFO, which uh, tries to do something similar as the NIFO, but uh, focusing indeed on use and integration of location data and technologies in digital public services. Um, there are uh, different uh, fact sheets about it, different reports on um, uh, join up uh, documenting this. And uh, usually this LIFO is trying to capture information through surveys on, for example, policy and strategy alignment, on how uh, location data and, solution, um, and uh, uh, technologies are used in digital government, that's digital government integration, how that provides benefits, so return on investment, how standards are used, so how a technical and semantic interoperability is uh, achieved, and also how this is happening in a way, in a collaborative way where governance, partnerships, and capabilities are quite important. So uh, there are different examples. The example is given here of Austria, and we'll zoom in on a few examples to some of these specific uh, topics now. One example is about uh, legal interoperability, um, where uh, in this case in Austria, um, they have worked on a kind of alignment of 21 registers, uh, of which some are not location or not containing location data. Uh, for example, uh, the register of persons, uh, but others are connected to, of course, registers where you have location uh, data or information in it, like the building and housing register, uh, the property database, uh, the cadastral map, uh, land register, etc. Another uh, example of non uh, location based uh, register is the central motor vehicle register. But the question here was and is, it should be maintained, is to align these. Uh, examples are every person in a country and also in Austria, uh, well, they live somewhere. Huh? So you connect or you link the person from the person's register links to a building and housing register. A house is of course located at a certain, at a particular address. So you need the address uh, register. Um, and of course, by definition also, a person lives at a certain address, might have different properties, so might have different um, 
uh, ownership or is maybe owner of different uh, houses or different uh, buildings. Oh, and of course a person can then have uh, a car or one or more car and uh, connect to, in that sense, to the central motor vehicle, vehicle register. So this is an example of a policy and strategy alignment where uh, legislation and administrative processes are referring to the same registers and these registers become authoritative data sources um, to link to each other and to communicate with each other instead of having multiple address registers or uh, person registers, etc. An example of organizational interoperability is on digital government integration. Uh, where in Flanders uh, work has been uh, done to optimize and simplify certain processes. Uh, one of the processes when you as a, as a business or as a, a private person, or even as, a, as, a, as a, a public administration, you want to use public space, you must obtain a permit to, and it's entered in a, a central platform, which is then visible to all. And then there is a, a process behind that if the impact of certain uh, activities on a road, um, on a square or whatever, it has an impact on the businesses along this road, for example, impact on, on public, of public works on, on shops, for example, then there is a kind of new nuisance compensation in the Flemish region. It's a financial compensation for those businesses that uh, are confronted with public works or with use of public space. And this is all, uh, this information is all integrated with location data and technologies. Uh, for example, in, in the map, you see here an example in the city where a crane is put to do some works. Of course, it might block one of the shops. Uh, also a, a rack is put to do some works um, on, um, on the, uh, the front of, the, of certain buildings, uh, but it can be also, for example, a moving elevator for people moving, so very temporary. Others can take uh, months. Uh, some of the work, public works usually take more time. So the interesting thing here is that instead of uh, having separate solutions, uh, um, they have combined them in one workflow, in one process, simplify the process, to ask for a permit on the one hand, but also to get uh, this compensation uh, in semi-automatic way. So the process is generated automatically. This is an example of how you can reach organizational interoperability requires good collaboration and streamlining of processes. Then the semantic and technical interoperability is also from the location point of view, very important. You see here uh, at first sight, a very complex figure, but it sh just shows all the uh, standards related at the different levels of the infrastructure for reaching location interoperability. Um, so it's done through standards. Uh, it's done through ISO standards, the ISO organization, but also open geospatial consortium uh, standards. And what is important that it's looking into uh, at the bottom level is the data tier. Everything is related to data. Uh, in multiple databases, uh, documented well, et cetera, true standards. It, the data have meaning. So it's about content, it's about semantics, and you need to understand the content in the same way. So the semantic interoperability is key. Uh, the definitions are key, et cetera, et cetera. And then the second important aspect is of course that the, there are protocols, technical interfaces in place so that the computers can exchange the data and that the user in the client tier, uh, you see at the top level of the schema and the complex schema, you see the user application and users usually use the data through the technologies. They don't see the complexity of all these standards and these technologies, but they use it through applications, the clients so-called uh, in a, an easy to use way. If we look at uh, semantic interoperability in particular, uh, you have different components. You have documentation about the data, about the components, about the services, et cetera. 
You might have even more detailed object catalogs, especially in the context of uh, location data. This is very important because we model our real world. So you need a description of what the objects mean, uh, how you portray them, uh, how you visualize them, uh, but also quality issues. Very important uh, are key components of such a overall model. And not to forget also unique identifiers, unique identifier management, and then specific for location data is the coordinate reference systems, but also, as I said before, terms and definitions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Semantic interoperability comes with a lot of challenges. Uh, for example, in cross-border context, you might have the same data or type of data, but different classifications. So that are different cross borders. So you have to harmonize them. Um, you might have different ways of, or different levels of detail, for example, for uh, representing buildings or other uh, location uh, objects. Uh, you might have uh, interconnections that do not fit well, like the example at the very beginning of this module with the streets that are not matching which uh, uh, brings some problems when you do some transport and mobility uh, applications. Uh, you have also different definitions in boundaries uh, at uh, the border of countries or regions, etc. So these are all uh, semantic uh, interoperability challenges to have common models with an agreed structure, with degree definitions, with all the elements agreed upon each other. Uh, within a country, but also across uh, borders. The impact of non-interoperability can be illustrated with an a real case example. Uh, in uh, the period 2002, 2003, there were extreme floods all, all over Europe. The Elbe, but also Donau and other uh, uh, big uh, rivers were flooding at that time. Of course, all these rivers are almost all cross-border. Um, so with an impact on different countries or different regions across the border. Um, and for example, in this case, uh, the soil data that are captured, for example, in Germany and Hungary were done in different ways. They had all the data, but the classification mechanism was different. So bringing them together to make simulations, to take decisions, based on the harmonized cross-border data was difficult. So they had to do the harmonization effort at that time when uh, the flooding occurred. So a lot of time was lost. So this resulted in, in very difficult joint decision-making across the border uh, of the German and the uh, uh, Hungarian uh, governments. And that makes impedes also making the right decisions and interventions on time. Uh, so this is an example of how non-semantic interoperability can impede decision-making or can refrain it or can at least uh, make decision-making slower. Technical interoperability is also important. Uh, it entails many aspects. Uh, it is about how interfaces, how the different computers through interfaces can talk with each other. If we all do that differently across borders, then also, we can't reuse the different com technical components together and integrate them in, in some solutions or in some applications. Uh, more and more APIs are used, so uh, uh, application programming, programming interfaces that are more meant for developers. And so components like APIs in the geospatial feed are more and more important so that developers can uh, develop new applications, new solutions for citizens, for businesses. Uh, to be used and reuse and built upon the uh, interoperability uh, infrastructure created um, uh, so far. Uh, and then of course, other technical components can be uh, uh, the cloud uh, solutions, uh, offering software as a service, for example, or even infrastructure as a service. So let's say technical interoperability is making the computers and the different networks and infrastructures talk with each other technically speaking. Uh, in this context, I have to mention uh, the INSPIRE Directive, uh, which is the Infrastructure for Spatial Information in Europe. Uh, that's a framework directive on the one hand uh, to uh, enhance the sharing and use of location data in an interoperable way. Uh, very important there is that for a lot of thematic fields, data models have been designed, uh, developed, 
agreed upon by the different uh, thematic communities and by the different member states. So all these are now available and also in the European Interoperability Framework, dedicated tools have been developed to uh, improve location interoperability. So as part of the IF toolbox, uh, one is the European Union Location Framework Blueprint, uh, which gives some guidance to member states how you can reach in location interoperability. Uh, it will be also explained a little bit more in uh, module four. Uh, besides that, there is also more practical registry uh, that is available to build components um, and to document your own uh, location interoperability architecture. And then finally, there is a, a tool to validate uh, your data, uh, your metadata, all location based, of course, uh, specifically so that it is matching really the inspire requirement. That are the three examples that are currently in the uh, toolbox of the IF. And I will end with a changing infrastructure, uh, which is still more or less the same and which is based on what Inspire has been doing, but which is extending more and more. So uh, the multi-data tier is developing much faster at a, a faster uh, speed uh, nowadays. We do not only have public sector data, but also a lot of data coming from citizens, crowdsourced data, so citizen science data data from sensors, cars, buildings, whatever, but also private sector data from businesses like Google as one example. So all these things should be interconnected and we go into the direction of using all this information and data together uh, through different applications. So the application tier, whether that's citizens, they can do it on their uh, mobile, on a pad, on a computer, laptop, whatever, businesses, public sector bodies, they all, uh, through applications will use this information. And then you have a middle tier, a service tier or an API tier uh, to guarantee secure access, to bring certain solutions in the cloud, to offer this API for developers, et cetera. So this is a kind from interoperability perspective, uh, new developments that we uh, are seeing now. So what you have learned in this chapter is that location interoperability builds further on the IF and is connected to the IF. It's more about exchanging location data, taking into account legal, organizational, semantic and technical aspects. But there are particular challenges that exist at the semantic and technical levels for location data and technology. So we need uh, to have harmonized data models uh, with specific interfaces followed by all so that we can really fluently use cross-border, uh, cross-region, etc., cetera, uh, all the data, location data and technologies. And with that, I come to the end of this uh, uh, chapter and this module.